and we'd like to welcome all of you out there to Sunday School this morning here at Pelzer First Baptist Church. And I'm very excited to be here and study God's Holy Word, the Bible. And we are very blessed to have a Bible in our hands. As we know, many countries, especially communist countries, do not have that privilege. Um, we will be shortly um, today studying more about the Holy Spirit. And in the near future, we are going to be starting a marriage book on the pillars of marriage. Um, we also welcome any questions or comments. We would love to hear back from you. Chapter 1, verse 2, it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So we have the Spirit of God mentioned there in the second verse of the Bible. And it's also the principle first mentioned where when something's mentioned, that, that theme's carried to the rest of the scriptures. Um, you won't see it contradicted later on, like uh, in the case of marriage. It's between a man and a woman. First mentioned in Genesis chapter uh, 2. Uh, the first First one, uh, excuse me, just chapter 1, verse 26, uh, where God made man his image. <clears throat> but, uh, so that theme of marriage between a man and a woman is carried from that point all the way to Revelation, because Revelation that talks about that if you're not to be uh, you know, all fornicators, for example, or not inherit the kingdom of God, uh, and so forth. So the principle first mentioned is applied to the Holy Spirit, it's first mentioned in uh, chapter. One verse two of Genesis, and that theme is carried throughout. We'll see. But then the previous verse of that, Genesis chapter one verse one, the Holy Spirit is inferred to by the use of the Hebrew word, the Hebrew name for God, which is Elohim. And Elohim is the plural form of Saint God. Uh, we usually think and we believe that there is one God. And there is, but He manifests Himself in three persons. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, that's also shown the plurality of God in Genesis 1.26, where the Bible says that, uh, let us make man in our image. And so the use of the word our denotes the plurality. You know, God is not saying to the angels, let us make man in our image, but he's saying uh, within, the, within the Godhead, within himself, uh, let us make man in our image. So that denotes plurality. And then plus the uh, Holy Spirit is a person of, of God uh, because he's part of the us. Um, so he's uh, being present at the time of creation. He's not just a mere force like some people teach. And the Spirit of God is given equality within the Godhead. Uh, so God says uh, in one of the prophets in the Old Testament, he says, uh, I am the Lord who is like unto me. Who can you liken unto me? So there's nothing that can be likened unto God. So if the Spirit of God wasn't God, then He couldn't be likened unto God. So there's the Spirit of God, God, and, and uh, the Lord, and all those names are actually used interchangeably. Um, so then in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, the Scripture says, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So, in the immediate reading of it, you would be thinking, okay, well, the Lord uh, is one God. And that's true. But when you look at the spelling of it, in the King James, I'm not sure about the other version, but the, um, the spelling is key here because uh, in the original, it's, it basically says, Shema, Israel, Yahweh, Elohim, Aked Yahweh. Basically, that means the Lord our God is one Lord. <laughs> but in the spelling of uh, to delineate who's who, because uh, the one spelling of God is Yahweh, and the other spelling of the uh, of God is the Lord in all caps, which is Elohim. So, uh, if you break it down and say it similar to that, is that the Lord. Um, Jehovah Elohim. That's what the Lord is in all, what is spelled in all caps, Jehovah Elohim. And then God speaks of Yahweh, which also could be referred to as uh, Jehovah Adonai, which is Jesus. So you're seeing the Godhead mentioned here. Uh, you got God the Father, you got the Son, but then uh, it's saying God is one Lord. Uh, so we have Shema meaning here. It says, Hero Israel, and of course, uh, and it says, Yahweh is the name of God, who has covenanted himself with Israel. So you've got the covenant of God. God agrees with Israel. So this is G-O-D. And, and, and then uh, Elohim is the spelling of, of the name of God, which is capital, all caps, L-O-R-D. And then uh, there's two words meaning uh, the uh, only says um, one when 
speaks of one God or one Lord. Uh, Yahshid is one and only meaning singular. There's two spellings of it in the Hebrew. This is not the referral to that one meaning the word Yahshid. Uh, but the word that is used is uh, Echad. Echad, E-C-H-A-D, which basically that means a compound unity. <coughs> so, um, in reading about it, you know, it talked about how the Israelites are to this day kind of confounded about this word because they see one Lord, so they think one singular, but he's compound, <coughs> he's three in one. So they, they, they try to get around that by saying uh, Yahid means singular, like you have a, an only child, like Jesus is the one and only child of, the, of God. He's begotten of God, so he's, he's a Yahid. But he's also a Chad, which is uh, one within the Godhead. Uh, so they try to substitute in Yahid, Yahid, meaning one God. But in reality, it's Akhet, which is the compound unity. Kind of, uh, I'm just thinking there on that part, but in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, kind of gives you an idea of what a, com what a singular unity is on it. Uh, Proverbs 4, 1 through 3. It says, uh, Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no knowledge. Uh, for I give unto you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. So that word, only beloved, that's using the word Yahid. That gives you the idea of this. He was a single son of his, of his parents. Um, so, the Spirit of God is mentioned within that us, the us make man our image. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, um, Aaron was instructed by Moses on how to bless the people of God. So, um, he says, and this is kind of a shortened version of it, where it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So, it's just a, a note here, Jeff Smith and I about, from which you know, we're going to study it from his book, uh, Living Water. But he says, notice the threefold blessing of God upon Israel. It applies the threefold. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. It notes also the trend three times. Um, the, uh, in Isaiah 48, 16, it says, uh, part of the verse states, uh, And now the Lord God, that's all caps, or it's all caps, followed by God, that's of Elohim, uh, so it says, And now the Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. And so the uh, prophet here is speaking of Jesus. Jesus is the me here. So in this verse, you got the Trinity. you got God the Father, Jehovah Elohim, has sent His Spirit, uh, and His Spirit has sent me. Speaking of Jesus. And Jesus coming into the world to be uh, in the future tense to be our Savior. So, there's three parts shown there of the Trinity and, of course, the Spirit of God is in there, showing equality with the Father and Jesus. Um, I was going to say that, as a, as a side note, too, that in reference to the spelling of Lord in all caps, uh, when Abraham was approached by the angel of the Lord in Genesis, it's actually the manifestation of God that was used to uh, speak of the angel of the Lord. Uh, that's that's a pre-manifestation of Christ. But, uh, so this angel of the Lord comes to, Mo, uh, to Abraham and speaks to him. And he says, and it's the Lord speaking to him. And he says, uh, when, when this messenger of the Lord comes, he speaks to Abraham and in all caps, which is capital L O R D. So Jehovah Elohim speaks to Abraham. But when you notice in the spelling in the uh, section there, Abraham speaks.
speaks back to the Lord and is capital L, lowercase O R D. So that's Jehovah Elohim that Abraham's um, being talked to, but then Jehovah Adonai is who Abraham addresses. So it goes back to what Jesus said no man can come to the Father except through me. And Jesus is that me. So we see that the person who Abraham is speaking to God through is Jesus, Jehovah Adonai. So you know, there's a little spelling shown um, in the scriptures to show accuracy. And does the word Elohim mean Jesus? Adonai. And Jehovah Adonai is Jesus. Adonai is. And then so Jehovah Elohim is, is God Almighty, which you'd be thinking primarily the Father, but it encompasses uh, the whole Godhead, but then you can't just come to God in yourself. You know, no man can come to the Father just to be drawn and that type of thing. Uh, no man can see God and live and that type of thing. Okay, at this point we had a glitch in the uh, in the uh, memory card in the camera as we did last week and the previous time. So what I'll have to do is uh, stop it at this point and just kind of uh, conclude the remaining time with the lesson. Uh, it's only a few more points here. Um, but that was the section there using um, the Old Testament to explain the Holy Spirit, uh, his existence, his equality with God, and as God. And now we're going to move into the New Testament section uh, mentioning of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are names attributed to the Holy Spirit, which include the Spirit of God, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit. Uh, we see that in Matthew 3.16, uh, this verse reveals the Holy Spirit to us. Uh, we see that when Jesus is being baptized, John the Baptist witnesses this and says, uh, it says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, and went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw, speaking about uh, John the Baptist, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, him being Jesus. So the Spirit of God is mentioned um, that quickly in the New Testament in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 16, referred to as the Spirit of God. And then in John 14, 16, uh, we are shown uh, the other reference there, speaking of the Spirit of God, 14, 16. Jesus said, I, And I will pray the Father, and he shall send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And this term here, comforter, is uh, referencing the Spirit of God. And the use of the word another denotes the replacement for Christ. Christ being God, as we've uh, spoken on in previous lessons and so forth. So to replace Jesus with something that is of a not the same type or like kind would not be in order. So Jesus said, I will send you another, meaning a replacement like Christ, the Spirit of God. And so um, he's the comforter. In Matthew 28, 19, uh, we are shown Jesus came and spake unto them, his disciples, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And let's see, that is, uh, then go down in verse 19. Uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the use of the word name there denotes a compound unity, as we talked about uh, earlier in the lesson, that uh, the word uh, akhed is the compound unity. So here's an, an example of an akhed, which is uh, <clears throat> showing the name, singular, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, if it were three different persons, three separate persons, three separate gods, 
as it were, then it would be baptizing them in the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for this compound unity. So that denotes um, equality amongst the different names of, of God. The Holy Spirit is the same equal to as the Father, and the Father is equal to the Son. Um, <clears throat> so that was singular. And um, so <clears throat> that brings us to the next point. Um, let's see. And then all three persons of the Godhead are mentioned in Acts 3, uh, uh, excuse me, Acts 8. Let's see. Acts 10, 38. And let's get on real quick. Acts 38. Speaks, um, starting verse 37. That the word I say, you know which was published throughout all of Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And, uh, see, for, for God was with him, or God was with Christ. So here we see in this uh, first ten words or so of verse 38 of Acts 10, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. So you got all three there mentioned. Um, three, God, three parts of the Godhead. And then Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, these verses speak on the Trinity. And let me flip that real quick. Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. So, here it speaks of, uh, there is one spirit, as it says in verse 4, one spirit, so that's one part of the Trinity, one Lord, Notice the lowercase spelling there. You got uppercase L, lowercase L O R D, or excuse me, O R D, uh, which denotes Jehovah Adonai. And then it says, one God and Father. So that God and Father, of course, is God the Father. You got the Spirit, uh, Jesus, and the Father. And Ephesians 4 4 through 6. Um, so the Spirit of God is shown equality in the Godhead. Uh, order of mention doesn't matter, or doesn't imply anything such as like better than or less than. Uh, typically, the order of mention is, you're accustomed to hearing, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But sometimes the order of arrangement is different, as shown in, in Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. As we just mentioned, it mentioned there the, uh, the Spirit first, then Jesus, and then the Father last. So it doesn't... Uh, imply anything like one's more important than the other. They're all one God. And so uh, then in Romans 15.30 it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. So in this case, Jesus is mentioned first, and the Holy Spirit second, then God the Father is mentioned last or third. Uh, then in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, the scripture shows us, way back in there, 13, 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all, amen. So here we see that the order of mention is Jesus is mentioned first, then God, speaking of God the Father, and then the Holy Ghost is mentioned last. Uh, so he says, you know, there again, the order of mention doesn't mean one's lesser than, greater than, that type of thing, or greater than or less than. Uh, they're used interchangeably and, and oftentimes switched around. <clears throat> 
So, um, the next point we see, that's the weight of the evidence, which shows uh, there's more than included in today's lesson that uh, we're provided with, shows confidence that there is one God who presents himself in three persons, um, whose order of names given is irrelevant. Thus the Holy Spirit is every bit as divine as the Father and Jesus. And with that, we'll conclude our lesson. Um, we kind of got a little behind on our lessons and uploading and this type of thing, but uh, we was able to correct uh, our problem. I had a, a larger data holding memory card in the in the camera, and for some reason it got to a certain point during this lesson, the last lesson, right at the 16 minute mark, 16.2 minutes, and then it it just locked up. It still was showing it was recording, but it was nothing. And also, when I went to upload it to YouTube, it was not able to upload it because it said that it was a corrupted file. But I was able to upload it to our laptop. So basically what I did, I set our camera back up with a different memory card in it and uh, just recorded it straight from the uh, screen, screen itself. Um, but the lesson coming out, um, in fact today, which is now the 27th of January, uh, we got this good memory card in there, so uh, we'll be uploading that soon, and it'll be the full running lesson time. Uh, so we won't have this kind of piecemeal together, but I didn't want to, you know, break up the lesson and, and just not record it at all or upload it at all and that type of thing. Um, so I uh, appreciate everyone who uh, tunes in and, and watches. Hopefully, it's a blessing and helping to understand with more clarity as to who God is and and who he is uh, and what he is for us and that type thing and who the Spirit of God is and this is very informative because there's not much teaching these days on the Spirit of God and uh, I feel like um, you know being Baptist or First Baptist Church Pelzer that um, we need to have you know a balance and an understanding of who the Spirit of God is it's like I mentioned before it's like you you get married to someone and and uh, and uh, you don't know who the person is <laughs> uh, so when we get saved, we receive Christ as our Savior, we're married, we're in fact uh, espoused unto one God, you know, espoused unto Christ, and we're going to one day meet with Him and be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, that type of thing. So if we don't know who God is, you know, that's shame on us because everybody around us is looking for some hope, and if we have the hope but we're ignorant, uh, we're doing them no justice, and we're also being disobedient to the Great Commission. So go out and share your faith with Others around it that you meet, they may be in desperate times, maybe suffering because of a loved one dying, or maybe they're uh, just going through a difficult time, ready to commit suicide, or who knows what. But you can be that little Christ to them, because the Spirit of God, if you're saved, is living in you, who has not only come to be a comfort to you, but you're to comfort those wherewith you're comforted. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. This is Todd Frederick. In the, with the two-in-one couples class. Come on, visit sometime at um, our church, Pelzer First Baptist Church. It's um, off of Levy Street. Um, it's right off of Highway 8 behind the post office. You'll see it up on the hill. Uh, thanks, and tune in next time. Give us a like. Give us